We got Rezin, king of Syria, Pekah, king of Israel, Ahaz, king of Judah. And the threat that they're dealing with is the rising power and influence and encroaching on the territory in which these three kings find themselves. This is what happens. Verse 5. King Rezin of Aram. Aram is another name for Syria. And King Pekah, son of Ramai of Israel, came up to wage war on Jerusalem. They besieged Ahaz, but could not conquer him. Now, there's no explanation here, and I'm going to probably have to provide one, but let's read on a little bit more. We have... Damascus is the... I like to get the capitals in here. We got Damascus and Samaria joining forces against Jerusalem. Rather than defending themselves against the Assyrian threat, they are attacking one of their potential allies. But they can't overcome the very well-fortified uh, palaces and walled city of Jerusalem. Uh, in fact, uh, Judah was pretty much cut off from a lot of this foreign policy and really was not as uh, not quite as uh, f farther along militarily or technologically than, than Israel was. But they were pretty well defended and they could just kind of hold up. Couldn't do it. At that time, the king of Edom recovered Elat for Edom. That means this is more of Solomon's uh, empire that's being cut away. And drove the Judeans from Elat. So what we have is for the very first time uh, the Israelites are having trouble from their, their southern neighbors. The first time since David. Ahaz sent messengers to King Tiglat-Pileser of Assyria. I, I'm not going to have you memorize the Assyrian kings, but I love to say their names. They're really fun to say. So, the emperor in Assyria at this point is Tiglat-Pileser sometimes called in the Bible, pull. So you really see that at the same guy. So, picture it. Damascus and Syria attacking Jerusalem. We don't know why. Jerusalem pleads for help from, Syria, uh, from Assyria. Come and help me when my neighbors are attacking saying, this is what the king of Judah, Ahaz, says to Tiglath-Pileser, I am your servant and your son. Come up and rescue me from the hand of the king of Aram and from the hand of the king of Israel who are attacking me. Ahaz also took silver and gold found in the house of Yahweh and in the treasures of the king's house and sent a present to the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria listened to him. The king of Assyria marched up against Damascus and took it, carrying its people captive to Kir. Then he killed Rezin. Now stop there, because I think... It's one of those things I don't really remember when I learned it or even where I learned it, but there's a, a common way that this whole scenario that I just laid out is, is reconstructed, because there's some key information missing. So you tell me if when I provide uh, imaginatively or speculatively some key pieces of the information, you tell me if it makes more sense. Uh, this is what suggested happened. In the face of the onrushing Assyrian threat, Pika and Rezin decide the only way they are going to survive is if they join forces together against the Assyrians. They know they have to join other kings and other countries into their alliance, so they approach King Ahaz of Judah. You've got to imagine how dangerous and ticklish and sensitive this kind of a political situation is. If you choose to back the Syrian-Israelite alliance. Uh, by the way, the war, I, I just... 
want you to be aware of these terms. The war between Syria and Israel together against Judah is usually referred to as the Syro Ephraimite War. Syro Syria Ephraimite named after the largest of the northern tribes, so that's really a, a way of saying northern kingdom, Israel. And they don't even mention Judah, but that's who they're fighting against. So, they want to form a common bond against Assyria, and they approach King Ahaz in Jerusalem and say, w would you do this with me? And you see, if King Ahaz says yes, and then Assyria overcomes the alliance, well, King Ahaz is dead and his country is as good as occupied. But if he says no to the alliance and the alliance wins, well, they're going to have enough power and authority and clout in the region to uh, put up a different king, one who's more supportive of their foreign policy, one that they can manipulate a little better. So whichever decision he makes, he's in a lot of trouble. So when he says no, he said, that's his final decision, I will not join an alliance with you. You're on your own, buds. Yes? How can they think of joining an alliance? I mean, Ahaz asked Assyria for help. No, this is before Ahaz. This is leading up to Ahaz asking. Oh. Ahaz hasn't asked yet. When Ahaz says no, see, this, this should make sense of it. Uh, Syria and Israel attack Judah. That's the syro ephraimite war. When Ahaz is in trouble, he then sends word up to Assyria and says, help me out here. And if you do, I will be your servant. Now that language is a covenantal contractual language. I will, you, I will be a son and a servant to you. In other words, uh, Ahaz is giving over the entirety of the country to Tiglath-Pileser. I mean, I will pay you, this is the same thing David used to do to other countries, saying, I'll give you all the gold from my temple, I'll give you all the, the gold from the royal coffers, I'll give you everything I have, just protect me against these two bullies, and I will be your servant. Uh, in effect, at that moment, Israel, the northern kingdom, became an occupied country because the Assyrian troops moved in, the Assyrian ambassadors began to make all the key decisions in foreign policy, and the king had only to listen, and uh, they are an occupied country. But from that position, which changes, by the way, Tiglath-Pileser is able to have a reason, an excuse, if you will, a, a, a warrant to move in and get rid of resin once and for all, and uh, at that point accomplish the, th the same thing in Israel that he did in Judah. That is, make Israel a client, or the technical term is make Israel a vassal state. Okay, uh, now this is where things stand for a while. Uh, this would be a good stopping place. Anything you need me to go over? Yes, Tuan. I'm quite confused. Um, so you mean like uh, Syria attacked Judah first, and then Judah... Um, Syria attacked Judah first, or us Syria? No, Syria. Yes. Syria and Israel together came down and attacked Judah. And then Judah asked help... From us Syria. I'll just put it in its right geographic place. Judah sent message up on the highway uh, and said, you know, official communication from one king to another, help me and I'll be your servant. Assyria swung down, uh, completely eradicated Syria, and occupied both of these places. So without really fighting a significant war, Tiglath-Pileser and his successors were able to take over the entire region up to the boundaries of Egypt. Oh, but yes. why, why you say uh, Syria and Israel to be alliance with Israel, to fight against Syria. That was before the war. Let me uh, lay out uh, the sequence here, and, and you tell me if this helps. One, the Syrian threat. Two, 
Kiro Ephraimite Alliance. Three, Judah, King Ahaz, refuses to join. Four, Syro Ephraimite War against Judah. What they're really trying to do is make life so miserable for Judah that the Judean noblemen, them, noblemen themselves will overthrow Ahaz and put somebody in who will cooperate. And that happens fairly frequently. And now, Judah asks Assyria for help. 